Short revision clip on recruitment and training during the period 1700 to 1900. And you'll notice a pattern here in that there's been lots of continuity so far. There's been very little change um, until you get to the 1850s for, for a lot on this section, for weapons, for armies, um, but also for recruitment and training as well. The turning point here is the Crimean War, once again, of 1853 to 6. We'll come to that a little bit later. But before the Crimean War, the methods of recruiting soldiers remain mostly unchanged until the 1850s. You had recruiting parties made up of a, a few serving soldiers who went around the country to local fairs and pubs, tried to attract men to join the army, um, usually with a bounty given for, for any man they successfully recruited, and also a bounty payment to the men who enlisted as well. In terms of service for joining the army, um, you were in for 21 years, so therefore joining the army was a lifetime commitment, and it was very difficult for the British army to attract recruits. Life in the British army was harsh, discipline was strict, there were floggings, um, as an example, pay was low, there was drill training which was monotonous, and therefore the army was very much seen as, as the last resort for people um, who had little else in their lives. Desertion was a big problem um, during these years from the army. Uh, that offence was actually punishable by death. So as well as recruiting parties, some soldiers continued to be recruited from the militia. From 1757, the Militia Act um, changed the size of arms and forced counties to provide lists of men aged 18 to 45, um, in which men were selected by ballot to serve in the militia for a period of about five years. As far as, as, far as army officers were concerned, they were still from wealthy, aristocratic um, backgrounds. Usually their positions were bought for money in what was known as the purchase system. There was no formal training or qualifications needed. Officers were, were just expected to learn on the job. Promotions, too, were either bought or based on seniority. So competence was not really a requirement, and this can be seen in the mistakes that were made by commanders in the charge of the Light Brigade, brigade infamously in 1854. Now, Britain was on the winning side in the Crimean War, of course, between 1853 and 1856, but the war did reveal huge problems in terms of command, tactics and general mismanagement. Now there was an investigation into this. The Royal Commission was set up by the government in 1858 to investigate what happened in Crimea and the report was pretty scathing. It condemned the failure to provide enough recruits and enough supplies for the soldiers. But the thing that you need to remember is that change was not instant. Even though you had this royal commission with this report condemning the failures in the Crimea, change still remained slow and gradual. There was still resistance from certain parts of the army and interests in government. There was still um, the reminiscences of the glorious victory at Waterloo, which had suggested that the British Army was great and didn't need changing, and not many people had the vote, so there's not much public pressure for change. But you have, from 1868, reforms introduced. This is when Lord Cardwell was War Minister, and his plans were aimed at encouraging greater professionalisation in the army. So, you get a number of measures taken. The purchase system for officers was abolished. Future promotion within the army was to be on, on the grounds of merit. Bounty payments for recruits were ended. The enlistment period in the army was reduced from 21 years to 12 years, which was divided subsequently between six years on active duty and six years in the army reserve. Rations were improved. Punishments such as flogging were abolished. And overall, there was just an increase in government control of the army, and the army, was, army commanders were much more accountable now for what they did to the government. Furthermore, army structure was simplified. It was divided into 66 local regiments, two battalions in each regiment, 
One would be sent overseas on empire duties. One would be kept at home. And you were starting to see military schools and colleges um, become increasingly established by the end of the 19th century. So, overall, continuity until the Crimean War, and then towards the end of the 19th century, you are basically seeing change, albeit sometimes a little bit slow. And that change really is an army becoming more professional in terms of both recruitment of soldiers and the training of soldiers.